I'm going to get my junk out. This is my junk. So I spent a, a day or so going around local DIY shops, looking in the bargain bins. Found these. Thought that might be useful. I went to local bargain shops and found stuff like this kid's pipe toy, which I know has been useful in some kit bashes and terrain builds that I've seen before. And other just bits and bobs. This is the lid of a squirty cream can. I've got some lights. Let's see if I can make a home for these two little guys down here. The first step is the box. You thought this was just to hold my junk, but no. I've taped it off with a bit of masking tape so I can see where I want to cut. Yeah, time to cut, baby! I need a little bit of help to hold this still because this box is quite flimsy and it did move. Before all you um actuallys comment, you should be using a Dremel. I don't own one. I do own a big old saw though, so I use that. I smoothed off the edges afterwards and it was pretty good. The next thing I wanted to use is this novelty 3 inch plasma ball. It's a bit of fun. Is it junk? Yeah, definitely. I also already teased this in my Commissar video with the instructions. What's that there on his little thingy? I drilled a hole out to fit this thing in the side of the room that I'm building for these guys to be in. This is going to be an underground bunker that's going in my bigger diorama that I will be putting together very soon. Once I drilled that out, I tested that it fit. It's gonna sit just in, not all the way in like this. That would fill the room too much. Just in like that. Next, I had these. These are like airflow bricks for houses, but they were cheap in the knockoff bin in the DIY shop, and I thought they looked like some cool vents to try and make them look like they're inside of a big computer. I had to get rid of these words off the top there though to make it look convincing, so I scraped them off and sawed off the fronts. This was to make nice little wall panels because the whole brick was way too big to fit in that little box. Once I'd done that, I now had these nice thinner vents for the walls of my little computer room. There were these annoying little indents for stacking the box on the inside, so I had to get them off. And I also made a little hole in the back to insert a door in from an old 40k terrain kit. This is meant to look like a computer room because this is going to be inside of an STC. If you don't know what this is, have a little Google. STCs are these massive kind of data banks from the ancient times in 40k. I trimmed down the vents and also made a little indent so I could fit the plasma ball through these vents as well as the side of the wall. The next thing was to make a computer terminal for them to be messing around with, trying to figure out how it works. This is an old pot for fish food. It had fish pellets in here and I wanted to make this little slanted bit be the bit where the tech priest is messing around with the screens trying to figure it out, so I had to cut it to the right height. I did that by marking it with a sharpie and then cutting it with my hobby saw. Once that was roughly the right size, you can see this is a nice little computer terminal now, no longer a fish food pot, beeble beeble. I decided to make it look like it was more technical using this little bit of that whipped cream lid and gluing it on the side here. I was going to make this brass to make it look like some kind of electrical casing. I don't know, technology doohickeys. The wall's going around the back here, and the computer screens are going on the front here. The walls needed a little bit more texture lower down, so I used this corrugated foam card stuff, and also put a circle on the back. You'll see why in a second. These are going on the side here, and the bricks are going on at the top of the wall inside. The circle was indeed to cut out here, slightly smaller than the actual circle that the light will be going through to make a kind of collar, so when I pull the light back a little bit, it'll be tight around, you won't be able to see outside. The placemat is an interesting one. Look at it, it has this lovely texture. This is going to be my floor. I measured out the size and drew around it. I wanted this nice kind of circle effect coming out from the circular shaped light on the side. Adding a little bit more interest, and when painted in metallic styles, this will just blend in with the rest of the metals in the room because this is going to be a completely kind of steel environment. There we go, lovely size, a little bit more interest in the flat plastic floor. And after I had all the bits prepared like this, I glued them all together so that we can have a look at the kind of basics of this little diorama. With everything glued in, you can kind of see the basics of what I'm trying to get at here. This is the cuff, so you can slide the light in and then glue it closed behind it. Over here we've got some masking tape on where I want the screens of my computer to be. The back wall is looking a little bit blank though and I think we need to do something about that. 
This is where the children's pipe toys come in. They are really good for this kind of work. They are cheap. These were one pound per pack. So I bought two. I only used one in the end though. I had quite a lot of fun putting these together. A little bit of trimming here and there and a little bit of mold line removing on the rubber joining sections. But they were perfect. This was a lot of fun and I'm really recommending using these in future builds if you're building terrain or little dioramas. Lovely, cheap, perfect for sci-fi miniatures or even historic ones possibly. Once I was done with that, I was quite happy with the back wall being a little bit more interesting now. Ignore the creepy man looking at you through the diorama. Just don't make eye contact. Just look at the diorama. Yeah, it's looking all right. Just needs a coat of paint now. And as if by magic, it's got a coat of paint. Sprayed lead belcher. This is a perfect start to our nice steel environment for this inside of a futuristic computer room, compound, bunker, STC, gobbledygook thing. You can see the lid as well, I'll be using that as the roof. Now how am I going to do these computer screens you ask? Well, let me tell you Sonny Jim. I have some of this self-adhesive mosaic backer that was also like a pound. These are lovely little squares and I trimmed a little set out here that was the perfect size for these screens that I wanted. I then sprayed them lead belcher to match the rest of the build. A dry brush of a brighter steel colour just to pick up top edges of everything and then this was on to the next colours for metal. The whole environment being just a few colours really made this diorama manageable to do in a reasonable time frame. So take that into account if you're doing your own dioramas at home. Simple is sometimes better. Don't forget the little computer screens Max. And on to the next colour. Putting brass on a few different areas like the top of the squirty cream lid just to make them a little bit different and add a bit of interest to the whole diorama. I also painted a giant rule plug that I'd used in the pipework at the back in this brass colour too. Most of the pipework then got this nice coppery colour. It was easier to paint the pipes and the connectors I decided and just went for it with this copper colour. Three different metals in here, I think that's enough interest so it doesn't all read as flat. Interestingly, it is difficult to paint this. It's painting inside a box. A lot of things are hard to hit, but it is a diorama, so it only has one viewing angle, and that is the front, so I didn't have to worry too much about getting around the back of things. Sometimes it's easier to paint upside down, like when I put this red little lens in the door, but I couldn't forget about the small details like this that will really give it some character. I realized I'd forgotten something. I hadn't tested if this light fitted in with the new wall pieces in place. I carefully pushed this light through the hole, very gently, I didn't want to break it at all, but it was a bit of a squeeze and it was a bit butt clenching at times, but then it suddenly popped through, and I think it was okay. Yeah, fine. It went all the way through, which was fine, and the collar worked well, but it didn't pull back to where I wanted to, so the ball's half sticking into the room, so this bit of plastic here had to go. Unfortunately, I'd already painted it. All I did was spray it again. I didn't bother dry brushing afterwards. This bit's not going to be that visible. It'll be fine. I also sprayed the backside of the ball so you couldn't see out of the diorama through it. I carefully got an idea of where it needed to be by doing that and used masking tape and my hand to do it a bit more neater. There we go. Right idea, Max. Moron. Hey, it worked. Never mind. Not a moron. Before I started the weathering, I decided to swap the places that these miniatures were going to be. I did want the tech priest to be messing with the computer screens in the background, but I liked the left side of him more, so I swapped him to the front so I could see the left side as he contemplates the orb. And now to quote your mum, time to get dirty. First step in dirtying is streaking grime. I slathered this absolutely bloody everywhere. I started with the back wall, letting it run down, but on quite thick, a little bit of thinning, not too much. I wanted the kind of drippy, natural, dirty effect. Because this is underground, and I kind of wanted it to look like stuff had seeped in over the years and dribbled down the wall, and that's where this dirt had come from. Not that something had happened in here to make it dirty. It had slowly accumulated on the walls and surfaces in this place. Nothing was safe, not even the computer screens. Centuries of dirt had built up in here, dust, bits falling from the ceiling, grimy nastiness. After this, I used a bit of white spirit on a cotton pad to bring that back. Careful with the cotton pads, they do leave fibres behind if you catch them on any rough surfaces. 
After I'd slapped it about a bit and cleaned up the areas I wanted to be a little bit less dirty, I then used it in quite an interesting way, I think. Rather than use it to clean, I used it to dribble, just like your dad. This helped the streaking kind of slowly seep through grime look that I was going for. The thinner picks up some of the oily pigment and runs it down the wall, leaving cleaner patches and dirtier patches. And this is a nice little cheat way to get this done quick. After that, I put a little bit more neat streaking grime over the top. You can see those kind of grayer patches, so it's a bit more dirty where I wanted it to be. The next step is some talent in a bottle. This is, of course, the Dirty Down products, the Rust and the Verdigris. They are my two favorite Dirty Down products, and they work fantastically. I went with the same dripping as I did with the streaking grime with the Rust. I also added a little bit of water to this to make it a bit thinner, and that does react with the Dirty Down product. It makes it a more lighter colour, so this rust was going to be very light, so at the end I'd add a few more darker drips of just neat over the end dried product. I really wanted it to look like the world was trying to get into this bunker and degrade it, but I hadn't managed to yet, even though it's been centuries. If you've been keeping up with my lizard lore in my other videos, you'll know that Discar, the planet this is on, is really corrupted and disgusting and corrosive, and every bit of metal here goes to crap really quickly. That's why my Chaos Knights that are going to be in the big diorama are all rusted to hell. And why the theme of them is scrappers, because scrap metal is very valuable on this planet. So as you can see, even though this is a perfectly built ancient fortress of knowledge, the degradation of the planet and its humid atmosphere has crept in and this is now run down, dingy, dirty, degrading. But not quite yet, maybe our heroes will get there in time. I used a sponge rather than dripping to put the verdigris on, just to give it a little bit of texture, a different type of corrosion. I think this was absolutely the right choice, and I think the verdigris effect looks really good when it is sponged on like this, because it looks like it's spreading, whereas the rust is kind of running as water gets into the bits of the building. This is kind of spreading from kind of the dampness and the grime that is on the brass and copper areas. No piece of brass or copper was safe, everyone got a little bit of the sponge. This is some really magic stuff and you can see it work if you speed up the footage and you can sit there and watch it in real life. Blowing it with a hairdryer does speed it up as well so you can watch it with your own eyes. And now for the lizard lore this week, something a little different. In the last video, I asked for a name for this tech priest and a little bit of lore. The winner of that competition is... Kale Brolin's 5876. You win! His name is Zarkon Kras. Power, that is the only guiding ethos of Zarkon. He knows that if he is more powerful, the Omissire will bless him with the ability to better serve. Willing to do anything in this pursuit. He has pulled favours built over his very long life to get here. He is galled to need the help of this flesh bag, Cyrus. But the task necessitates the use of meat shields. Luckily, the hazards of this quest mean that Zarkon is unlikely to have to tie up loose ends once he has his prize. So there we go. This is Tech Priest Zarkon Crass. Cool. I wanted to put some lights in the computer screens in the diorama, so I bought these cheap little LEDs from a bargain shop. They were a couple of pounds. I slowly put them in this hole I'd made in the back of where the computer was on the other side. I then slowly fed all of these LED lights in there as they weren't very bright and I wanted to make sure these computer screens were really glowing and provided a nice green atmospheric effect. After I gently inserted these like I did with your mum the other night, I realised I had a problem. The problem was the glow emanated from around the computer area as well. Now this kind of looks cool if it's some kind of containment device, but I want this to be a computer terminal. The glow coming from around these cracks is a bit of a problem for me. I'm not very fond of it. Even in the light, it still is a bit of an issue. I had an idea to fix this. My idea was PVA glue and baked dirt. This is the same dirt that I used on my Chaos Knight bases. To tie all this in, I was gonna cover the cracks with it. And as you can see, it's worked really well. No more light leaking. Perfect, and I used it all over the rest of the diorama too. This ball is lots of fun. 
it's really good and I think it gives a nice 80s sci-fi atmospheric effect for the whole diorama as well as adding a little bit of interest how this weird computer works it's not like one of our computers what is this even for in this system something to do with the storage of this information the effect was nearly there the earth leaking in through these vents was really thematic for the planet of Discar where this is going to be but it needed a little bit more there's going to be a jungle outside on top of this in the big diorama with big trees. So those tree roots are going to be poking through the vents and various areas that they're going to get through into this little bunker. I used real tree roots for this that I clipped from the forest near my house and super glued them in place. Okay, I think we're done. One more behind this pipe and then we're there. Right, time for the outro and then the reveal shots. So there we have it. Do you think I've successfully made a decent home for these little dudes out of junk? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe for more hobby content. This diorama is ongoing. Not too much longer till I start actually working on the big diorama and getting everything in place. I'm really excited for that and I hope you're gonna be here with me for that. So subscribe. Do a little like if you're here right now, you've watched the whole thing, might as well give that a tickle. And thank you to my Patreons. Your names will be over the end reveal shots as always from now on. And if you would like to support me and become a Patreon, get little teasers early for the things I'm going to produce and other little rewards as well. It's all there. Links up here and also down in the description if you've missed that because it's probably too late by now. Yeah, it's gone. Yep, not there anymore. So without any interruption, here is the reveal shops. Shops? Reveal shots. I'll see you next time. Remember, it's not a pile of shame. It's a pile of future fun.